God has responded to our prayers, saying it is now possession season. All creation is waiting for a prophetic generation. It's unbreakable, unshakable. It's possessable for those that dare to believe. I prophesy the greatest miracles are going to happen in the next season. This season is going to see a transforming of our people. It's time to set your foot, say it loud, and shoot it straight. Hi, I'm Steve Penny. Welcome to Say It Loud. This is where I declare the truth with a loud voice, boldly uh, declaring what I believe God's Word is saying about these days and for us so we can live in the blessing and victory of the Lord. Welcome. Good to have you with us. Trust you'll be blessed by the Word working mightily in you. Let me pray before we preach. Father, today I thank you for your Word. It's rich, it's alive, it changes us, it sets us free, makes us free people to live in the blessing of God. I pray for every person that will watch this uh, ministry video. May it enlighten, enrich and bless. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen and Amen. I got a, a couple of messages I want to do Number one today, and next week we'll do number two. But I've had this incredible sense of uh, urgency, uh, for want of a better word, that we need to talk on confidence. And I want to give you a couple of messages on confidence because uh, when I talk and meet with people that are good, godly people, Christians, uh, many are struggling with confidence. Look at how the wicked's going. Look at governments and look at all the other stuff. Well, that's the first problem. You'll never have confidence if you uh, look and describe the size of the enemy. And so uh, I, I just want to today and next week speak into your life. This one firstly is confidence that works. And then next week I want to talk on confidence that wins. How to get to the end game, the end result that God's put in your heart to believe for. So come on, let's have a look at confidence that works. It's got to work in you in your daily life. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. 1 John 5 and verse 14, great verse. Now, this is the confidence that we have in Him not in our own abilities. This is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if He hears us, then He'll bring it to pass in our lives. And so we have to learn what God confidence is. There's a couple of expressions of confidence you must clearly understand and avoid. The first one is crowd confidence. Amazing how people can whipped up can get whipped up as a crowd or a group of people. And in that moment, there's incredible confidence. They shout and they carry on and, you know, they promise great things and they're hoopla about everything that's going to happen in the next season. Well, crowd confidence never works, never has, never will. God never works through the noise of a crowd or the strength of a crowd. When it came to Gideon and he blew a trumpet and said, I think it's a season for God to move, 32,000 came down to him. God said, can't use them all. They're just a hyped up crowd. They've got this sense of, well, it's a new day. Let's believe anything could happen. And God said, I want you to do a simple test. He ended up with 300. God uses those that have confidence in Him. And so don't ever get caught up in crowd. Yeah, be enthusiastic, buy into the things that maybe God's doing, but don't get hyped up in a frenzy over a crowd, what is it? You know, a crowd event that may not be there. Jesus said to His disciples, are you going to leave me also when things got tough? And they said, we can't leave you. Our confidence is in you. Who else can we turn to? 
So crowd confidence never works. You got to pump that thing up more and more if you be, de, believing and uh, what's the word? Trusting in crowd confidence. Second one, the Bible says, don't get caught up in it is self confidence. That was the devil's plan. Man, I'm a big shot now. I'm over all the choir of heaven and everything. And when Jesus lights up, I it I refract all his glory and I look, to, look like I'm a pretty big shot. I think I'm going to, and then he mentions the five I wills that are, you know, legendary as to his demise and downfall. And his whole strategy was self-confidence, self-honoring, self-love. He said, I will five times. And you often hear people say, how you doing? I will, I'll, I'll be okay. I will be okay. I, I had to tell some off recently that I was trying to help. I said, I'll be okay. I don't need your help. Uh, when clearly they did. That's self-confidence and it's misguided confidence. I'll be okay. I will sort it out. Leave me alone. I will sort it out. No, that's self-confidence. Of course, we have to take responsibility for our lives, but God built us to be community together and self-confidence can destroy the strength of community. I'll sort it out. I will achieve my goals. All of these things focused on me, me, me. I, I, I. What will I do at my best? I'll achieve my goals. I'll make it work. I'll find a way. I'll make it work. And I had a young guy who wanted to be the richest man in our church. And he was saying, I will be the best in this church. You watch. Well, he's no longer with us because self-confidence has a way of leading to self-destruction. And so we need to understand that God confidence, here's, here's the, the thing I want you to get in Philippians 1 verse 6, God confidence is always in God. It's not God confidence if it's me. God confidence is always in God. Listen to this, Philippians 1.6. I love it. Being confident of this very thing or this one thing that He who has begun a good work in me or in you will complete it. Keep doing it. Bring it to pass until the day of the, the return of Jesus Christ. God confidence is in always in He who has begun a good work in you. That's why we put our trust. I, I think if you read the Bible clearly, the greatest expression of confidence, faith, is trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own abilities. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will surely bring it to pass. And so that's the first thing about God confidence. It's in God Himself. Trust in the Lord. I love it. Maybe you need to hear that again today. You can't make the impossible happen. Only God can. And so here's the second one about God confidence. It's always in God's we have confidence in God's presence. Judges 6, verse 14 to 16. One of my favourite st uh, stories or accounts in the Bible is the whole uh, story of Gideon. This young guy that God came and a uh, prophet awakened him that God could use somebody, the dead, to believe. And so he dead to believe. And then the angel of the Lord showed up and started to change Gideon to believe he could be it. And the biggest thing that he had to do in Gideon was get him to have confidence that God was with him. God's presence is with you. So listen, I want to read it to you. Judges 6, verse 14 to 16. Listen to what it says. Then the Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go in this might of yours and you shall. Go in this might, your strength, your might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. I am sending you. So Gideon says back, hear God saying, have confidence in the might, your strength, your might, 
uh, I'm sending you, therefore I'm equipping you. And so Gideon says to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? I haven't got that kind of strength, that kind of capacity or gifting. Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I'm the least in my father's house. Talk about a small group of people. I'm the runt of the litter. You're trying to tell me I've got might and ability. And the Lord said to him, and he sums it up here, surely I will be with you and you shall. I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Right here in this passage is one of the clearest things God talked to me about as a young youth pastor starting out in ministry at a camp on a windy mountain one night in a little caravan uh, and uh, God opened this passage of Scripture and says, if you want to be great for God, if you want to do significant things, you have to have confidence. I've sent you, I've empowered you, and I am with you. A confidence in God's presence. Listen, that's one of the, the, the most common of all of the enemy's deceptions. Well, God's not interested in you. God's not listening to your prayers. God's upset with you because you you know, did something silly. Well, he's not even on your case right now. God says, I will, surely I will be with you. I'll give you might, I'll strengthen you, and I will never leave you nor forsake you. You got to get a confidence that works in your life. I've had down days. I've had big fights. I've had enemy attacks on my life over the years, 50 years in ministry. I've been through some stuff. I tell you this. This one here, right here, uh, it got confidence in God's presence. I don't beg, God, where are you? Jesus, please. I, I have learnt over the years to have this confidence the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valour. I've sent you, I've empowered you, and I will never leave you. Go and defeat your problem as one man. You don't need a big crowd to do what God wants you to do if He's with you. And here this promise, this confidence in God's presence is life-changing. Some of you whose confidence has been shaken need to come back to this. You're born again. You're a child of God. He never leaves nor forsakes you. He hears every cry, every tear, every part of your life. He is unbelievably committed to you. And uh, the next one. It just gets better. The third thing you need to develop is a confidence in God's faithfulness. Faithfulness. Confidence in God's faithfulness. There are times and we're standing and God, I know you're with me and all that, and still nothing happens. You've been there, I've been there. Still, your sickness doesn't get better. Your family breakdown doesn't get better. Your financial drought doesn't get better. Then you have to say, what's my fallback position? If everything doesn't work, what do I fall back on? Well, here it is, confidence in God's great faithfulness. He is forever faithful. Can't help himself. Habakkuk 2 verse 4. I love Scripture says this, behold the proud, don't look at their role modelling. Don't look at the proud. And it goes on and says, because his soul is not upright in him. God's not going to bless that. His confidence is in, is in himself and his riches and his deceptive capacity to be wily, sneaky and all those things. Then it says this, but the just, don't compare yourself to the world. The just shall live by his faith. What it means here is simply the just person shall live by his faith in God's great faithfulness. My faith is not in myself. I've failed many times. The just person puts his faith in God's great faithfulness faithfulness. His mercies are new and fresh every morning. They'll never fail me. 
His great faithfulness is always attended to my path and will surely bring things to pass according to His will. You have to stand sometimes. Your fallback position is simply, even after you say, well, I'm trusting in God, you have to step back even further sometimes and say, no, He is faithful. He is faithful. Devil, He is faithful. Crowd, He is faithful. Mockers, He is faithful. Those that attack to destroy or strip you of your inheritance and there may be reason for your uh, blip in life. No, it's not now up to you. It's Blessing does not come by performance. It comes because He is faithful to those who call upon His name. He is faithful. Come on. Come on. I think some of you should say it out loud today. He is faithful. He is faithful. He'll never, ever turn away from the righteous. Then the next one, confidence that works in our life. This next one is confidence over condemnation. People lose their their confidence when they make a mistake or they come under attack and, uh, and they know that the devil says one thing when things go wrong. There's a gap in your head. You let the enemy in. Remember when you spoke badly to your wife or your husband, when you shouted at the kids or when you went over the speed limit and gave someone a, a, a rude sign, uh, cut them off or, or whatever. The devil is always on your case. Well, you let the enemy in. I remember numbers of uh, people, young people just married that have, uh, they're pregnant or the woman is and uh, they're about to have a baby and I've had numbers of guys come to me and say, Steve, I'm really struggling with a sense of condemnation and fear over what the baby, what, may happen to the baby uh, at birth. I said, why is that? And they said, well, I did a whole lot of stuff as a, a teenager. I was immoral or whatever else. And I just, I think I've given a, an opening to the enemy to come back and judge me. He can't do that. He can attack you. He can't judge you. Only God is the judge of the righteous. The devil cannot judge you. He can come with lies and deceptions. And so we would pray with these guys, numbers of them over the years, and simply say there is now no condemnation. I'm going to read this verse in just a moment to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. See, confidence defeats condemnation. There's not a person listening to my voice that hasn't had the lying voice of the enemy bring you into condemnation because none of none of us are perfect that's why the bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the lord though he trip up you and i man and woman are imperfect and as we try and practice righteousness we do get to side sidestep or we trip up over something and immediately the devil says ah You see, that's why God won't bless you from now on. And people struggle with that whole sense of condemnation. They can't pray properly. They're on the altar call all the time simply for condemnation. You have to break that over your life. And I do that right now. Listen to this verse, Romans 8, 1 and 2. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. If you walked and got off into the flesh or other nonsense, all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm returning to you. Wash me, forgive me, cleanse me. For the law of the Spirit of life, that's the law that's at work in me. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin, condemnation and death. I break the power of condemnation over you today. Don't live under it. Don't entertain the lies of the devil. 
He cannot judge you. That's God's job. You're one of the children of God. All He can do is attack. And He does most of that through the sound of a roaring lion, lies, deception and defeat. Deal with it. I shall not be condemned. My confidence is in the Lord because I am in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? I love that. Come on, that's for you today. Now, another one. You got to get this confidence that works in your life. The next one is confidence in God's grace. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Confidence in God's grace. This is where the Lord said to Paul, and He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You got to believe that the grace of the Lord is all sufficiency for you to overcome every work of the enemy and fulfill the plan of God in your life. Even when you're weak, you have to have a confidence. By grace, I'm saved. By grace, I'm empowered. By grace, I overcome. By grace, I win the victory. By grace, I reap a harvest. Confidence in God's grace. Listen to how the early church understood this great truth. In Acts 4 verse 33, listen to what it says. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Great power and great grace go together. Come on, get, get a, stir up your confidence. Grace is not a feeling. Grace is not uh, for a wretch like me. Grace is the abundant supply of heaven's fullness so you can overcome in this life. Grace to overcome. I got a confidence that greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. That's a confidence in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. That was such a, a final conclusion to many of the epistles. And then we come to another one. This is the last one in this confidence that works. Confidence that works. Confidence that works. That means it's an everyday confidence. This stuff works. I keep my confidence in God, my trust in Him. It works. Here's the last one. Confidence in God's rewards, confidence in God's rewards. I love this. Have a listen to Hebrews 10 verse 35. Hebrews 10 35, confidence in God's rewards. Therefore, it says this, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. Keep your confidence. There's great rewards being built up as you stay confident and trust in the Lord. One of the things, people say, oh, I hate getting old. Well, I don't like the, the slowing down of my body, but I do love the ability to look back on life. And I do love the fact that you can, after 50 years of being a preacher and a church leader, you can come to some conclusions. I was born uh, a Christian. You can't. You've got to be born again, I know. But I came out of the womb speaking in tongues. Dad, 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 mama, whatever. But right from my earliest days, I was in a Christian family, grow up, grew up to be shaped by a Christian faith. My dad was a preacher and I loved it all my life. And you look back on 70 plus years and this is what I have come to know. In all those years of having a confidence that God's in control. Here's, here's a couple of little things, and they're just big things to me. I've come to know it was worth praying for. Man, I've struggled to get up and go to prayer early some mornings. I've found it a challenge. Had a late night and my body wakes up at the same time very early. God, please. But I've come to this conclusion that my confidence over all those years was worth it. 
and my prayers. It was worth praying for. Don't stop. Don't give up prayer. Don't, uh, you know, get distracted and say, well, I haven't seen anything happen. You don't know the other side of the veil, how incredibly active heaven is on your behalf. Don't stop praying. It was worth praying for. Another thing about all these years it is this, it was worth waiting for. I don't like waiting. I Apparently I've been told I'm impatient, but I don't stay around long enough to discuss that. But uh, so I guess there's this, I don't like waiting for stuff. I want to break through, possess it, take a hold of it now. But I've learned over the years, you've got to put a confidence in a faithful God, trust in Him. He will surely bring it to pass. It was worth waiting for. Marion and I, like many of you, have raised kids in the church and uh, we all go through the testing season where the kids want to see what's on the other side of the fence and stretch their wings. We're just so grateful that we kept our confidence in God and our prayer life and believing God for our kids. Now our kids and our grandkids are all in church serving God with us in the house of the Lord. It was worth waiting for. All kids grow up and mature at different ages. It's worth waiting for. Never give up on a good promise. It's worth waiting for. Keep your confidence in the Lord. And then the third thing that I need to say that we have come to a conclusion about keeping confidence in God's rewards is that it was worth the pain the tears, the anguish. It was worth it because of the incredible. When our son Andrew died at 27 of cancer, back in 2003, the pain, the anguish of soul, sorrow and mourning, and all the implications of a loss that shouldn't have happened at that time, according to my understanding, but it's not your understanding that brings you out in victory. It's your confidence in the one that knows all things. And so Marion and I said, well, our son died, but we didn't. Our faith didn't. Our confidence in God hasn't. In fact, we're going for more in God than ever before because we trusted Him and we're keeping our confidence. And now, of course, we look back and we still miss. But the pain... It was worth the pain. Out of that uh, journey of the death of Andrew, I wrote a book called Where's the Miracle? has gone around the world. It's been a blessing to so many people. Now, out of that, God's given me favour to raise up sons around the world who are cha- and daughters who are champions for God. It was worth the pain. It was worth the pain. Don't roll over on your back. Kick your legs in the air and say, I can't stand it anymore. Keep your confidence. Keep your confidence. Don't cast away your confidence because it has great promise of great reward. And it may be today that you have, your confidence has been shaken. Stuff just keeps on stuffing, happening. And you've just sort of let go of some of that tenacious confidence. It's not your strength. It's confidence in Him. It's faith in His great faithfulness. And I urge you and challenge you and encourage you today, hold fast. Stay true. Keep your confidence strong in Him and He shall surely bring it to pass. I want to pray for you today. I feel like this is a good message for people in such a time as this, and you're watching it for a reason, I want to pray the word of the Lord over your life, for He has come at such a time as this to bring you into a new season of favour and blessing. Behold, the old things are passed away and all things are becoming new. Therefore, do not 
Put your confidence in yesterday, nor tomorrow, but put your confidence and trust in the Lord. He is working even in this season and in this day to bring you into the day of His power. And it will be like no other season you have seen in your life. I speak that over you today. The Lord's working mightily. Stay true. Keep your confidence. Faith in His great faithfulness and it shall surely come to pass and you'll be a blessing to many beyond what you could imagine possible in the natural. The promise of the Lord is true and sure to all who believe in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Hey, God love you. Thanks for being with us today on Say It Loud and we'll do part number two. This today was confidence to work. And next week is confidence to win. God bless you. God love you. See you again soon.